indeed a pleasure to be here today at the Day of Code 2021. I bring greetings from the Information and Communication Technology Agency of Sri Lanka and also our Ministry, the Ministry of Technology. Actually, I am going to use a few slides in presenting my presentation, the speech, and I am going to structure it in three parts. First, I am going to talk a little bit about the Day of Code, uh, what events had inspired the Day of Code, and also a little bit of history of the event and now, then I will go on to uh, speak a little about uh, the computer science, the career prospects in very general terms and then of course I will turn on to the National Digital Transformation Journey ICTA's spearheading because we need a lot of computer scientists, analysts, coders in that journey. So that is how I'm going to structure my, and I'll be using a set of slides, as I said. First, uh, let me, uh, let us concentrate on what's the Computer Science Education Week is. I am told that it is the largest learning event in history, and it is usually held in the second week of December. And the aim is to get kids from kindergarten to grade 12 interested in computer coding. And uh, the hour of code, which is another significant event is a part of computer science education week. Uh, the comp I'll be speaking a little bit on the hour of code where students are literally expected to code for an hour but let me first concentrate on the computer science education week. In general computer science education week highlights the importance of computer science. As we all know computer science teaches pro problem solving and analytical skills. It is an essential skill in the modern job market the Day of Code hopes to improve computer literacy among all, not only among students, but everyone in the society. But I will sh speak the significance of that later when I talk about the digital transformation expectations of this country. Uh, let me speak a little bit of history about the Computer Science Education Week and what inspired this great initiative. A coalition called the Computing in the Core has initiated this event and the first Computer Science Education Week has been held in 2009. And I was told that tech giants like Google, Intel, National Science Foundation and other tech giants have funded this event. Uh, usually the Computer Science Education Week is held from 6th to 12th December. And this has been chosen in honor of Grace Hopper's birthday. I will speak a little about Grace Hopper. Grace Hopper is a pioneer of coding. Uh, and she is considered the pioneer of computer coding and her birthday falls on 9th of December so the 6th to 12th week selected as the hour of uh, as the week of uh, computer science education week a little bit on Grace Hopper who is known as the pioneer of computer programming uh, she is an American mathematician with a PhD from Yale University and she was a rare admiral in the US Navy uh, volunteer force and one of the first programmers of the Harvard Mark I computer way back in 1944. She wrote the first computer manual, How to Operate Mark I, in 1946, and she coined the term bug for unexplained computer failures after Moth infiltrated the circuits of Mark I computer. She was instrumental in designing the first compiler to translate programmers' instructions into computer codes as far back as 1949, and she developed Flowmatic, the first English language data processing compiler in 1959 which inspired the programming language COBOL. A little bit on the Hour of Code initiative. Hour of Code initiative was actually initiated by Hadi Patovi in 2013. He is the CEO of Code.org. Uh, this one hour introduction to computer science is designed to demystify coding. The first event that was held in 2013 had over 15 million students from 167 countries participating and to date over 100 billion students have tried an hour of code and the day of code in Sri Lanka is inspired I am told by the hour of code initiative. A little into the day of code in Sri Lanka as I told it has been inspired by the hour of code and the computer science education week. Day of code in Sri Lanka is aimed at inspiring the talent pool to enter the computer science field and unlock the true potential that lies within the younger generations. This is a great event as it will sow the seeds to inspire and forge a culture of innovation and IP creation. Today's event will have 
sessions to give an idea on the field and endless possibilities that lie within and also workshops to give real hands-on experience on famous platforms. This event is organized by STEM UP Educational Foundation and they are the national partner for Code.org in Sri Lanka. I will just speak a little bit on the endless possibilities of computer science and coding. As we all know, computer science deals with the process of solving problems and every part of our world lies some sort of problem that needs solving. Therefore, endless possibilities are there in the field of computer science to help the world. Today, computing and computer technology are part of just about everything that touches our lives. Understanding different dimensions of computing is part of the necessary skill set for an educated person in the 21st century. Why ICT is so much interested in computer science and coding and why we are giving our complete support to this event, we unveiled as I go along in my speech. But I will use some keywords here. Computer science drives innovation. May it be in science, engineering, business, entertainment or education. And computer science drives the digital transformation. We know that digital transformation is happening worldwide and we need more and more people with analytical skills to drive the digital transformation. Today, companies have become in increasingly dependent on the data-driven analytics and data-led insights to help make informed and informed data-driven decisions, which make computer science and coding invaluable. Research shows that the jobs in the field, in the computer science field, expect to grow by 13% by uh, 2026. Uh, this growth, uh, growth is faster than all the other opportunities, uh, all the other occupations and these jobs are among the highest paid tech jobs in the world. Uh, in this slide, I am showing a small diagram which gives out the most popular tech jobs in 2020. And you can see, I have indicated the salaries also, how much the computer scientists are in demand in this world. The important and the interesting fact is that while computer scientists are on high demand and a highly paid lucrative career path, they are among the top 25 jobs that are with the best work-life balance as identified by the World Economic Forum. Uh, if you take the uh, first 25 jobs in the world that has the best work-life balance, 10 of those are in the computer science field. I explained uh, up to now the importance of computer science coding for innovation, IP creation and also digital transformation. So this is where ICTA has taken a lead role to join with you today and to make this event a success. As you know, ICTA is the lead APEX government agency that is driving the digital transformation of this country. And the motivation for the digital transformation comes from the top. As we all know, the National Digital uh, Policy Framework, uh, Vistas of Prosperity and Splendor, has a whole chapter dedicated for a smart nation, a technology-based society. And there are four focus areas in that chapter. To make Sri Lanka a global innovation hub, to make Sri Lanka create a citizen-centric digital government, make Sri Lanka a digitally inclusive country and promote IT entrepreneurship. With that intention, the Ministry of Technology was created under the President himself and five of the key national organizations was brought under the Ministry of Technology, including the Telecommunications Regulator, ICTA, Sri Lanka CERT, SLT Mobitel and Department of Registration of Persons. ICTA has been mandated as the apex agency of the government to drive the digital transformation of this country and is also the agency that is driving the digitalization of the government. I would like to say that a national digital transformation strategy has been developed by ICTA and this was approved about a year back to be exact in November 2020. This digital transformation strategy actually is anchored to two firm pillars, the digital government and the digital economy. 
and it is on a foundation on of digital laws and policies so we have created a digital transformation strategy for the nation we have taken a whole of nation approach a 360 degree well rounded approach which covers digital economy digital government and digital laws and policy and in this policy and in this strategy rather we have created a whole of government blueprint and a road map for the digital transformation of this country with kpis and timelines i will share with you uh, a diagram a table that gives the kpis that has been set for the national digital transformation i will not dwell on the details of the digital transformation kpis but i just want to highlight a few kpis there to show the importance of computer science and coding to the national digital transformation now if you look at these strategies uh, by 2024 we plan to have 300000 it professionals in this country to support the digital transformation we are going to create 500 government cios Uh, we want to uh, make the citizen it literacy up to 75% and the government officers digital it literacy up to 100% we want to create 1000 startups and 700 tech startups and for the government we are trying to create shared solutions that will span across the government organizations we want to have at least 30 shared solutions by 2024 for the government and of course we have specific domains like health education motor traffic so on and so forth so we would we want to have at least 50 digital services for this uh, lines of businesses which i just explained so all these needs the employment of computer scientists coders programmers software engineers software architects i will uh, very briefly show you the government digital blueprint as well you can see the government stack here Uh, uh, this government uh, digital blueprint or the stack is on a foundation of infrastructure the what we call the foundational infrastructure where we have the lanka government network the largest wide area network in the country optical fiber driven the lanka government cloud which hosts more than 250 government organizations their tenants and their web websites and also the forthcoming sri lanka unique digital identity framework which will be in operation probably in the third quarter or the fourth quarter in 2022 which will form the basis for the digital transformation of this country on top of that we have a layer of shared solutions shared solutions which i just explained in my previous slide also that would span across the government like email and collaboration solutions hrm and payroll solutions so on and so forth and then of course on top of that we have a stack of line of business or domain specific solutions for motor traffic education transportation health so on and so forth and and on the, at the topmost we have the common access layer to take these services to the citizens of this country through mobile apps web portals kiosks and apis so you can see there's a very elaborate digital government blueprint and this is all based on computer science and uh, we need the support of computer scientists programmers software programmers software architects to develop this framework and make this happen in sri lanka uh, just a quick glimpse on the national level projects government projects that are happening right now as i mentioned the sri lanka unique digital id program the first digital id in this country the court automation program the e local government program where we are trying to Uh, automate the whole local government system the e gramaladar program the smart education automation of health uh, health inform informatics so on and so forth a lot of government digitalization automation computer program uh, automation programs are happening and we need uh, a heap of computer scientists software engineers software architects to support this drive I will also quickly focus on the digital economy side of our strategy. One of the key targets we are uh, looking at is to make the IT 3 billion US dollar industry by 2024 2025 time period. And we believe that this next wave of uh, digital economy will be driven by startups and innovation. I used this keyword innovation earlier also. Computer science drives innovation and you see where the connection is happening 
computer science towards our digital economy strategy. As I said, the next wave of digital economic growth in Sri Lanka will be driven by startups and innovation, and there's great potential for computer scientists, people who know coding, people who are in this field to take part in the national development drive. I earlier mentioned that computer science drives innovation. As you know, uh, today, if you look at the share of the current export value related to technology, IP creation and high-end product engineering is only 35% of the total value. Uh, we, through innovation, we want to make this 60%, that is IP creation and high-end product engineering to grow up to 60% by 2020. 2024-2025 time period and here again you see the connection between the requirement of computer scientists and the vision for the innovation in the country. We have five focus areas in our digital economy strategy for technology industry development to de develop the startup nation, technology diffusion to all areas and all starters of the society, capacity building, formal and informal into the society and also take the technology to the regions through our regional cluster program. But if you look at this whole scenario, you can see each of these thr thrust areas depends on computer science, IT and IT knowledge. So there's great scope for IT and IT scientists, IT engineers in this country going forward. And as you know, a digital transformation will not be successful unless otherwise the general public, the people out there in the society accepts that and trust the digital transformation. So we are working on legal and policy framework for the digital transformation that would create trust and promote inclusion. So I gave you a very brief introduction to the digital transformation drive that is spearheaded by ICTA and the scope computer science and coders have in that national agenda. The country need IT skills to drive the innovation and IP creation, I repeat that. And country needs IT skills to drive the digital transformation of this country. That is how ICT has come to become the national partner of this event today. And I am happy to thank all of you who have made this event possible, the STEM UP Education Foundation, which is organizing this event the platform partner Impact IT and also Commercial Bank for powering this event. Thank you.